Hello, folks. Welcome back. Uh, this show is running a little bit late. Or, actually, it'll be on kind of early. But for I am the one, the only. I am a Hobo Tom. And here with my cat, the Hobo Cat. And another wrestling buddy. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it's so good to be able to watch wrestling with some friends over at the house. Cook some pizzas. Have some snacks. Indulge in an adult beverage, or many. Ah, it's so good tasting. As you can tell, and probably from the title, I'm here to talk about, do a quick review, because I don't have the setup necessarily for an AEW livestream event. Or at least not when friends over, because I haven't, I do need a new laptop. I have to get a new printer, too. My printer crapped out on me. So, I don't know. Um, but I'm here to do my review of AEW All Out. Overall interesting. Some things were good. Some were very good. Some not so good. So, it had that nice little up and down effect. Oh, there's a, the, the cat sniffing around where Jorge was. Hip, hip, Jorge. So, let's get into this review. I'll tell you what happened. Tell you how good of a predictor. Ooh, yummy. Um, El Vagabundo Ijo del. De, ooh, wow, it should not hurt. Del Hobo Septeocho is. Gee, he's adding that many numbers behind his name now? That's weird. That's okay, though. This is pro wrestling. You're allowed to be weird. Allowed to be the theater of the absurd. Well, I should take a shower before I go to sleep. Yeah, that would also be good. Um, let's get into my review, though. It starts off... I didn't catch most of it. Um, well, at least most of the pre-show, I was still at work. I don't run from work. There's always... God, that one idiot customer shows up literally right as... like If we close at 7 o'clock, they show up at 6.59. <sighs> well, I don't care. They pay me to be there. Heaven knows I could use the money, especially with my printer dying on me. That's one more expense. I do have to get that side table over there. Well, my fr Although, Jorge, again, hip, hip, Jorge did provide a nice screen, which I'll use for future use. That's pretty cool, though, because, I, again, I, have my, I had the hobo theater set up one day, maybe for my three-year anniversary. Wow. I'm getting old. Uh, maybe I'll show you that. The new hobo, new and improved hobo office. Um, let's get things started with this review. Um, I cannot go to Discord because I had it on full screen, so I don't know if anyone's saying, was seeing the phrases of one hobo Tom. But I'll tell you what, I was kind of shocked. Um, first match, Britt Baker versus Big Swall. Uh... I don't know where it started because I was cooking and or running back from Walmart, getting supplies and stuff. It ended up in a dentist's office. I guess they have to have a dentist's office near the Jacksonville Stadium. If a football player lost its teeth, that would be very convenient. All I remember is that Britt Baker was went for the Novocaine and Big Swole injected. Ouch! That would be painful. Both of Britt Baker's legs with Novocaine. And that had to be some of the good stuff. Because Britt Baker's legs went numb. This was a tooth and nail match. So I guess I did not see the ending. I know Big Swole won. The fact that she injected Britt Baker with Novocaine in a dentist's office. And I know she kicked, she did like a Van Daminator through one of, and hopefully it wasn't her original one. So I'll tell you what, I have mine, my degrees up on the wall in clay, in case in glass and mahogany wood. I hope that wasn't her like real certificate and just like some piece of paper with some writing on like a Microsoft Word document. So that would suck. Um, I don't think there is any amount of money any wrestling federation or anyone period 
could give me to destroy those and truly heaven forbid a person that thought they would they could destroy them i do not want to be you but so with all that being said it seemed like it seemed good it seemed a lot better than that dumpster fire of a match they had on dynamite based on what i saw big swole one i guess she ripped out either brit one of brit baker's teeth or ripped out one of brit baker's nails i don't know which would be more painful though although if you did a toenail if your legs were fully numb who knows um, I'm just, a, I was just a scientist at one point. Um, uh, my job was to dissect things. Scientists, for the most part, dissect things. They take them apart. Doctors are the ones that have to put them back together. Never did that. Although I did try with a mouse once. But for a few more days. Oh, well. Um, I'll tell you what, this match was a ham sandwich. Then we go right in. And I thought they'd start off with a 20-man battle royal, but they didn't. They went to the Young Bucks versus Jurassic Express. Again, the Bucks of youth, baby. Um, oh, that was weird. I don't know. Again, one day, I will hopefully get that snowball microphone. But the Young, young Bucks, this was a really good back-and-forth match. Just when you think Jurassic Park... Was going to take control of the match. The Young Bucks somehow stopped it. The Young Bucks were being very heelish too. And along with what happens at the end of the night, it, oh wow, it made sense. Um, the action was good. Again, there's always going to be a spot fest whenever the Young Bucks are concerned. Uh, Jungle Boy Jack Perry, amazing talent still. He's going to go far. Unfortunately, he did, he did eat the pin. I'll tell you what, from what I saw of it, because I was cooking at this time, it was a good match. Again, the back and forth is good. The double, the, the team mark and the double teams by the Young Bucks. I know some people poo-poo it. I can see that point of view where it's a little too flippy. But in this match, it was spot on. It works with everything the Young Bucks do. This, folks. Wow, did I get a little sunburn? I'll tell you what, it's a good solid cheeseburger match. Let's see, let me have a little sip of my yummy beverage. And then we have the 21 man battle royal. I don't necessarily, I don't know. The format's weird and wonky. It's that Battle Royal, Royal Rumble combination where you have five guys, you have 21 guys, each picks a card, and that suit goes in at the same time. So you have, you have four suits, five guys, and one person is a joker. He gets to go in last. I think, or it's at first. I forget. They explain all the rules. Again, then it becomes a Battle Royal over-the-top rules apply. Um, I forget the elimination order. I just know at one point Darby Allen was involved. Ricky Starks put thumbtacks into a body bag, tossed Darby Allen in said body bag, tossed body bag with Darby Allen in it along with thumbtacks over the rope. Because again, there were some eliminations. Uh, no one really have note. He, the thing with this, so with Darby Allen, he he's eliminated by Ricky Starks. That that was pretty good. Um, the thing is, there were a lot of tag team people involved, so you know they're going to help each other, but you also know they're not going to win, because really the only tag team person that's won anything sing singly, but has still been in a tag team like this has been Otis and they haven't done much with Otis. So historically they haven't done stuff based on the history. They're probably not going to do stuff like this. So, you know, it's not going to be a tag team, per tag team person, even though a lot of tag teams were in. Um, let's see here. What else was there? 
Yep. And then there goes someone else out of the ring. Uh, Brian Cage was eliminated. Um, Will Hobbs was there. Someone I never heard of. Uh, then it was Cage versus Archer. That was really good. Again, two freaking brutish monsters going at each other. That was awesome. Matt, Matt Siddell was there. Um, I thought he was... Why do I think he was with the Motor City Machine Guns? Maybe he was here for something. I forget. Or I could be thinking of someone else, too. It was the same name. So so he was here. He's from Ring of Honor. I think there were a couple of Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor guys involved. Again, AEW doesn't have that big of a roster. So to fill in the 21 people, I'm sure they said, hey, you were with Ring of Honor. Listen, this is a one-time deal. Here's here's a thousand bucks just being this. Lasting for a while and get tossed out. Hey, for a thousand bucks, that's not bad. Especially if you live in the area, too. So again, if you're anywhere in the state of Florida, you could that's like a day trip for the most part. So that was pretty good. Um Archer wins though. Impressive. I thought uh, I was worried Eddie Kingston was gonna win. Generally managers valets don't kind of win this, so I'm like they're gonna really buck the trend now. Lance Archer wins. That was good. Um a solid cheeseburger battle royal. And this next match was kind of weird. Uh, Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. They kind of brawl all over the place. It's the last man standing. They start, where are you, Sammy? Yeah, Sammy tries to kill Matt by running him over in the golf cart. Again, makes sense because, again, Matt tried to do that to Sammy at one time. And they start wrestling. Uh, Matt took a weird fall onto the concrete. And the ref just said, okay. No. Throw up the dreaded X. And that's never good. And I froze in my video because I was moving too fast. But, yep, the referee. So I can do this nice and slow. Yep, threw up the dreaded X. All wrestling fans fear this X. That means there is a legit in injury. Come on out. That X goes up. Wrestler goes off. But Matt Hardy was still wobbly. Um, I think the ref said, okay, just, just bring on. Okay, Matt, you, you can go. Just bring on home. Because initially he had to go seek medical treatment. He didn't know. It was a last man standing match. He was standing. But, oh, boy, was he on some spaghetti legs. Um, eventually they climb up a scaffolding, which is if you're on spaghetti legs and a concussion already. Don't necessarily want to do. He shoves Sammy Guevara through the stage, where you know there's an there's there's a, there's an air pad there, or crash pad. Uh, Matt Hardy wins. It seemed really quick, really weird. It's a can of soup. And then. Oh, this was the match I was waiting for, and it really didn't disappoint. Thunder Rosa taking on Hikaru Shida. Yes, the the South of Mexicana takes on the Far East of the Island of the Rising Sun, Japan. So this was a good match. Um, very MMA style match to start off. That looked really good. It looked like a shoot that became a work. Yeah, because Thunder Rosa wasn't the one that broke Res and Rosemary Arms. It was some other uh, luchadore from Triple A. I think it was Sexy Star that did it. In a little miscommunication there. We haven't seen Sexy Star since then. But who knows? She She's happy though. Hey, as long as she's happy and healthy, all power to Sexy Star. <laughs> Remember, she did show up in the Daytona Beach Bomb Fight League once. Um, Thunder Rosa then takes charge of the match. Uh, Hikaru Shida hit a tilt roll backbreaker. I don't care what they say. That still looks great. Um, then she then did that like half lift stretch. That stretch. That was good. Thunder Rosa hit a uh, Death Valley driver on the apron. Amazing looking. Um, 
Thunder Rosa again went back to her enemy background, put a key lock, or attempted a key lock, a standing key lock onto Hikaru Shida. Then there was a superplex by Hikaru Shida, and this unfortunately started the end of Thunder Rosa, but I'll tell you what. This had to be a good 20, 15, at least 15, 20 minute long match. This was good. This is the way AEW should book their women. I'm going to say a lot of people would be impressed by this match. Um, it's probably the, the best AEW's one, one match to date. Um, I know the thing with um, oh, What's Her Face and Thunder Rosa. Last day, wait, it was good. This was actually better. Hikaru uh, Shida. Again, she went for that stretch muffler. That stretch iron muffler. Like a GTS backbreaker, and then ended with a with a with a running knee, that shiniest wizard V trigger that she uses. The Karushita wins. Ladies, surf and turf match. And then we get to uh, the Dark Order taking on the National Nightmares, Scorpio Sky, and Matt Cardona. Eh. This was an okay match. It starts off in a brawl fashion, the way you would kind of expect it to. It's not, it wasn't clean in any way. Matt Cardona got his, his moves in. Uh, Colt Cabana definitely got, he, he tried. I don't know, just. It felt okay. It felt busy. It kind of felt quick. And there were some implications, as we found out towards the end. Um, Dustin Rhodes gets the victory. Colt Cabana, I think, eats the pen in this. I forget if it was Colt Cabana or one of the other, other, other ones. Anna Jay did get involved. She gets speared out of the ring by Brandy Rhodes. You knew even Brandy was going to get involved somehow. Uh, QT Marshall was there to get beat up a little bit. He gets this. Again, then it becomes very typical, your, your eight-man spot fest. It was an uh, okay match. Um, They're definitely up, um, Brody Brody Lee was definitely mad at Colt Cabana for 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 whatever purpose. Dustin Rhodes seems excited. He's going to face on AEW Dynamite Brody Lee for the uh, TNT Championship. This match is what it was. It was kind of a filler match. It's a ham sandwich. Then we had another match I was looking forward to. FTR taking on Hangman, Adam Page, and Kenny Omega. This was really good. Um, the double team chops by Page and Omega are great. The ring generalship by both teams is utterly amazing. The, I was kind of hoping for a little bit more. I wanted this match to be a little bit longer. I think they really could have focused a lot more on the Hangman, and Page. Kenny Omega breakup storyline throughout this match. It just seemed like a really good match. Again, the Hangman and Page hitting a shooting, a standing shooting star press. Amazing. If I did that, I'd fall on my neck and kill myself. Um, again, F F T R, very classic wrestling body locks, uh, submission holds, going after the knees. Kenny Omega. Classic stuff. Um, trying to get the distracted ref. The sound just to say, yeah, we tagged in. Ref wasn't buying it. Uh, again, so they tried to cheat the way heels would cheat in tag teams. It was really good. Kenny Omega hit, hit the You Can't Escape. Again, the, the great teamwork by both. I can't even say that enough. Um, it's so rare where you see such good teamwork by both teams. FCR is so coherent. When Page and Omega are on the same page, they're actually really good. 
Um, Paige seems to bring out the wrestler versus a showman in Kenny Omega. Um, Paige again hit a moonsault to the floor, FTR. Uh, double diving headbutt. <laughs> again, FTR get the get the chop block onto Omega. Um, Hangman and Page eats the pin. He eats the shatter machine. I don't even, I don't even care. They can copyright violate me forever. Kenny Omega's upset. Uh, FTR win. Very good surf and turf match. Then we get um, Kenny Omega's upset. He kicked something because I guess um, Hangman and Page brought beer into the ring to kind of make sense. Drink, drink to your sorrows. Or FCR left, or FCR left Page some beer. Yeah, Kenny wasn't having it. He kicked it. That wasn't beer he kicked, by the way, folks. Beer comes out of the can yellow. Or more properly, if it's a good beer, it should be amber or an almost near chocolate color. This is clear. I am upset at you, FTR. You left Bud Light Seltzer for Hangman and Page to drink and Kenny Omega. Not even White Claw. Or maybe it was White Claw. But boo! Boo, FTR. If you're going to bring in any adult malt beverage, it has to be a Zima. I, we were talking about that at work. How would you describe Zima? I describe it as sugary alcoholic Sprite. So that's what it was. We got in the heyday of coolers. There was the best was the Ikea, Ikea Berry one. That was really good. I don't know what was good about it. I just remember it tasted good. That's all I needed to know. Uh, Kenny Omega gets upset. He heads off with the Young Bucks. So you might see being the elite again. Or the elite. Be elite. Be, be elite. Elite. And then we have the Orange Cassidy, Chris Jericho. Mimosa Mayhem match. This one's too long. Um, it starts off... She, Chris Jericho hits a code breaker. Immediately tries to throw Orange Cassidy into the thing. From there, he hits him with a, a cheap plas plastic cocktail tray. And you knew it was cheap. It was probably something from catering they put sandwiches on. Because it just absolutely disintegrated. And you know it was cheap. Uh, from there, Orange Cassie got put through a table, so that's okay. I can deal with that. There was the yay boos inside the ring. This match should have been five minutes. Someone should have screwed up something. Chris Jericho should have gone on the drink earlier. Um, Orange Cassidy hit a terrible running punt kick. If you're going to do this... I don't care if you hit their chest. I don't care if you hit them on the side of the neck. I don't care if you hit them on the shoulder. You have to somewhat hit them. Or if you're not going to hit them, the guy who's supposed to get hit has to, like, olay him. Because it looks terrible. Okay? No other ways to put it. It looked terrible. It makes wrestling look fake. It makes it look contrived. It makes it look the wrestlers aren't even going to put put it together. You can do a punt kick to someone's shoulder and chest. It does not necessarily hurt them. It might sting. That's the nature of the beast. Um, you don't want to go to the Brie... Trust, you do not want to go to the Brie Bell extreme of giving someone a concussion. No. You don't want to go to the... So you have that extreme here. Like just blatantly kicking someone square in the face. No. You don't want to go, go for, for, for the miss, the swing and miss, and then and then please sell for me. No. You want to be somewhere in that kind of happy medium. Hit him in the shoulder area, right there. This makes a good thud. Get inside the neck. 
you pull it a little bit, make contact with them, give them a reason to sell. Like the one few time I was in the wrestling ring, the one guy's like, why aren't you selling for me? I'm like, well, at least hit me. I mean, you can hit my neck with an open palm. It's going to sound god awful. And I'll be like, oh, I got hit. Oh, oh, oh. How am I going to cover my head? Oh, what the hell hit me? Oh, yeah. I mean, you can punk kick me when I'm done in my shoulder. Oh. <laughs> I could just lay there and look dead. At least I know I would have gotten a hit. Again, don't go for the one extreme. Don't punch me in the nose. I won't be happy. There will be a potato coming your way. Other extreme, don't miss. I'm not going to sell it. Hit my shoulder, my neck. If you sla open face slap to the cheeks, fine. That's okay. You're not going to do much. You're going to make me mad. Yeah, right there. There, open palms, fine. Again, don't straight up potato me in the nose or like just knock, knock my orbital bone out. Okay? You have to make some kind of contact or it's... There we go. That's out of my system now. Um, Orange Cassidy hits the big um, orange punch at a couple times. Chris Jericho's in a compromising position. One time on the second row facing the outside. Yeah, Chris Jericho goes for a dive in the orange. And it wasn't even orange juice. It was Tang. Okay? It was Tang water. There's no way in, in, in fudge muffining where you're going to fill it up with that much half and half champagne orange juice. Even it wasn't even half and half tang orange juice. The champagne bottle there was for show. Yeah, the glass kind of looked cheap. Um, it wasn't exactly sugar glass. So it was okay. You know what? It just seemed to go on too long. This was a ham sandwich of a match. Then we have the main event of the evening. And was this my Stone Cold Lock? I forget. What was my Stone Cold Lock? Oh, my. I got the Stone Cold Lock right. The match of the night. I got the snooze wrong, though. That's okay. Yeah, because I had Orange Cassidy winning, in a, or El Vagabundo, um, Hobo's Fente Cinco had Orange Cassidy winning as a Stone Cold Lock. So that's pretty good. Oh, I made Jorge. Hip, hip. Jorge laughed so hard whenever <laughs> I said El Vagabundo uh, del, del Hijo de Hobo Pente Cinco or some weird combination. Again, this is wrestling. This is the theater of the absurd. You have to you have to have some fun with it. If not, I don't know what to tell you, okay? And since I'm at the end of my adult beverage, this is the end of the show. In the main event of the evening, John Moxley taking on MJF. This is actually pretty fun. Um, John Moxley, very classic wrestling. Um, with that, remember the paradigm shift was banned. Again, he controlled. He whenever it was a wrestling match, MJF was in control. Uh, again, master of the headlock. Always good to see he would rub, rub it in, uh, bite the finger of John Moxley, do all the heel things he should. Um, MJF for a while seemed one step ahead. Again, whenever he would, he, whenever MJF found himself on the outside, he would very quickly get inside. Except for the one time, John Moxley faked him out. He faked he was going to jump. John Moxley hit, threw it back in. He got stomped on his head, and a real stomp on the neck. That's good. That's the way you do that. You don't just miss. You don't pull it way too early. You stomp him. Yeah, maybe the toe like goes near the back of the head. The heel hits the base of the neck. It's not as t it's not as terrible. At least it's missing, and it's it's not gonna put someone in the hospital either. Again, that happy middle ground. You're not just 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 m whiffing. Period. You're not knocking him unconscious either. Good stuff. Then uh, Moxley hit the gotch pile driver again. His uh, his arms have been worked over a lot by MJF. Uh, he's actually selling his arm. He tries to uh, relocate it. Self relocation really doesn't work. You don't. You don't hit. 
your shoulder against the wall to, to relocate it. What you do, you have to raise your shoulder. You have to raise, it hurts as hell heck. You have to hold some kind of weight. I think a bunch of bucks. Tense your shoulder up. All of a sudden, let it fall out, and it will actually pop back into place. You're going to go, ugh, 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 into a wall. That's to, like, burst, burst the sacks in the elbow. At least that feels like it's slowly going away, so I don't have to do that physically to myself. Because that's kind of painful. I've heard about that. You get a burst of sack, bruise on the elbow. You just you have, That you have to break, and it hurts. Yeah, doing this against the wall isn't going to real, or even a turnbuckle. You have, to, you have to hold something, tense it up, all of a sudden let it fall down, untense it very quickly. Weight brings it down, pop! Oh, and trust me, that hurts too. That's definitely no fun. I do not recommend that. Because um, it doesn't matter, you'll have to go see a doctor anyway. Like, listen doc, I screwed my shoulder up, what's wrong with it? Oh, you dislocated it, but it popped back into place. Normally, they don't ask you any questions after that. They say, okay, here's some pain pills. Let's give you some physical rehab. You move on. Um, again, hitting it just doesn't... Probably worsens it, actually. Probably makes it feel even worse. I dislocated my shoulder once in a football game. And I was like, holy crap. I can't believe I have to... Th Thankfully, it was at the end of a game. And I think the fourth quarter, like they put in the substitutes. And I was like, oh, thank God, because this thing freaking hurt. Yeah, I went to go see the trainer. I'm like, I screwed the shoulder up. Because, yeah, because I popped it out. I think I yanked. I, I think it, like, eventually fell. Sometimes it will fall back into place by itself, just the way the shoulder joint is. But it doesn't matter. It still hurts. She said, yep, you dislocated your shoulder. You have this movement. No. Here, you wear this. Go see a doctor. It's like, shoot. Um, doctors are not my favorite thing to see. Unless I really have to. Um, so again, he does the, the double stomp to the arm was amazing. The slap sounded like he broke a bone or just okay. And although that was again, the right way to do it, maybe more so towards the injury side, but not all the way there though. He definitely didn't miss. Or if he did miss like the toes hit something and it made a great sound. At least it looked legit. It was just what I'm saying. I that went for a food. You are arm bar. Um, from there, he went to like a modified uh, arm break, arm breaker key lock. He began to bite the fingers, so that was really good to see. Um, hit a heat seeker. However, that only got two count in the crosswalks. Didn't exactly work. Um, then the end of the match, uh, Wardlow got up on the ring, tried to do like an underhand toss of the ring to <laughs> MJF. MJF fumbled that. By the time he picked it up, he was face-to-face -face with Moxley. Oh, he had that look. Moxley knew that the rest back was turned. Hit the paradigm shift. John Moxley wins probably the right way for John Moxley to win during this match. That was really good. Surf and turf match. The only thing I wanted to see, I wanted to see a crowd shot, and I want to see Renee Young in the crowd. Um... I wanted to see the four horsemen. That didn't happen either. Let's see here. What's a? This was a good card. Again, the the good stuff was really good. The stuff that wasn't good was just flat out wasn't good. It was that really happy medium, and I'm done another notebook. Notebook goes in El Garbagino. And you know what? This was for the most part a good cheeseburger all out. Oops, I need this still. I'll throw that out too early. I have to do some editing. But again, so that was all out. A really good video. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching my review. Um, one day when I get the proper technical setup, I will make it better. Again, I do have to be a little bit careful with AEW, even if I am streaming it illegally from Brazil. Um, yeah, I just have to be careful with that or else I'll get sunked anyway. So, actually, one last thing, because El Vagabundo, Hijo del Hobo 23, he only got two matches wrong. Wow. 
I couldn't do that. Six out of eight. You know what? Triple H was in charge of AEW. He would have been inside the head of one Hunter Hearst Helmsley. And that's it. Thank you folks very much.